Good morning, friends. How good it is to be in worship with you this day. I would invite you as we begin our time together, if you haven't already done so, to find your candle and to take a moment to light it. And as you do, may it serve to remind you of the very presence of Christ in our midst and of our connection to one another as we worship this day. I invite you, as we begin our time together, to rise in spirit as we sing together, Glory to God. As we worship this morning, just a few reminders for you. First, you'll notice on the web page immediately below that there are several tabs for you to take advantage of. There's one there for you to register your attendance, and we invite you to do so. Let us know that you're here with us this morning. There's also a place for you to make a prayer request. If you have a particular need, either for yourself or for others, to feel free to use that tab to communicate with us. We'd love to hear from you. There's also a place there for you to register your offering. And so um, there are several methods by which you can do that. And we invite you to use that tab um, to make your gifts to God through the church. There's also a place there for you to sign up for our newsletter. And I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to, to go ahead and do that. That's where we channel all of our announcements, all of the events that are coming up in the church, and what's coming up each week in worship. So take a moment to sign up for that as well. As you know, this is Mother's Day. I want to share a picture with you, if I can. It's a picture of my mom. And I won't be able to see her today as she lives across state. But I carry her in my heart this day. My mom's an amazing mom and has gifted me in many ways. As we worship this morning, I trust that you are celebrating your mom as well. And as we celebrate and honor our moms for their many good gifts, we recognize that there are also many for whom this day is bittersweet. And so we remember you as well. Our children of the church 
have spent some time in these recent days getting ready to celebrate their moms. And so as we continue in worship, I invite you to receive these gifts from the children of our church. They offer them in celebration of their moms and to the glory of God. Hi friends, I hope you guys are all doing well today. Let's talk a little bit about our moms, okay? Have you ever thought about how many things your mom has taught you? Your mom has been by your side teaching you and guiding you since day one. She taught you how to roll over, how to sit up, how to crawl and walk and talk and even how to play. That's not even scratching the surface. For just an example, Think about the things your mom has taught you about shoes. When do we wear shoes? Why do we wear shoes? Why do we have to wear socks with shoes? Why do we have to wear the fancy dress up shoes sometimes instead of the fun ones? And let's not forget the biggest thing she's taught you about shoes, how to tie your shoe. Moms are always teaching and caring for us. They started long before you were even born, and they'll never stop. Even when you're a grown-up and you have kids on your own, you're going to be calling your mom for advice on how to be a good parent yourself. So say a prayer of thanks for your mom and all that she has done for you, because it's a lot. Tell her how much you love her today, and always, always, always remember to follow the advice and instruction she's given you. She gives you that advice because she loves you and she wants what's best for you. That's the best way you can honor your mom today. So to all my mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a blessed day and I thank God for all of you and my own mother as well. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Joe and I love you so much, and we are so grateful for everything you do for us, and we hope that we can celebrate soon. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for taking care of us. We love you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day to three beautiful ladies in our family, my two sisters, Amanda and Rachel, and to our wonderful mother, Sue Craig. Mom, we love you so much and thank you for everything you have done and still continue to do. We love you and thank you for being our mom. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma Craig. Happy Mother's Day, Grandma Craig. I love you. I love you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Mom is the queen of the world. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. We have the best mom ever. Mwah! <laughs> we love our mom because she is loving. She is caring. She always believes in us. She teaches us. She gives great hugs. She works hard. She is our, our best, best friend. We love you, Mom. We love you, Mom. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Thank you for us working so hard. I hope you have a great day. 
Happy Mother's Day! We love you! Happy Mother's Day, Mom! Yay! Hi, I really love my mom because she makes the best fruit food and she gave me hugs when I was sad and she helped me do my homework and I really appreciate that. Bye. I love my mom because when I fall short of my expectations for myself, she reminds me that there's always tomorrow. I love my mom because she's always been there for me through the ups and downs throughout my whole life. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you, and we hope you have a great day. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. I love you. I love you. What's your favorite thing about Mommy? I go to sleep. Go to sleep? Yeah. Okay. I want to extend a Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and in particular to my mama. I appreciate you more than you could possibly know. And I'm so, so thankful for all that you do in my life, and I can't wait to spoil you and pamper you on this Mother's Day to give back. Love you. I love my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mama and Grandma. Thank you everything you do for us. We love you so much. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for always loving me and supporting me no matter what. I hope you have the best Mother's Day, and I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you more than anything. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for always being there. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you very much. What I love about my mom is that she's always there to help me. Happy Mother's Day. Hi mom, thank you. We love you. Hope you're having a nice Mother's Day. We appreciate you. Thank you for changing my drinking diapers. Thank you. You are awesome. We hope you have an awesome Mother's Day. We love you, mom. Hi mom, happy Mother's Day. Love you so much. Thank you for taking care of me. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you so much. I hope you know how amazing and incredible you are. Thank you for being there when I need you all the time. Um, yeah, you're a wonderful mom. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. Thank you for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Bob. <laughs> hope you have a great day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. I hope you know how amazing and incredible you are. Thank you for being there when I need you all the time. Um, yeah, you're a wonderful mom. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Love you. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Thanks for always being there for me. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you have a really good day, and I hope to see you soon. Love you. I love my mom because she cares for me. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day, day mom. mom. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. You are my rock. You're the best. Um, I don't know what I would do without you. I can't believe how much I continue to lean on you, even now at the age of 33. Um, you are everything to me, so thank you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. Happy, happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Hi, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Okay. Three, two, one. We, we love, love you, Mom. Mom. Thank you for everything you do for us. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day! Hi everybody, greetings from Washington DC. I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day and Feliz Dia de la Madre. Tayandira Dinada, Shuba Salagalu. Shub Makidin. And lastly, see if you can get this one. Anelad Gunun Kutlu Olsun. Shout out to Debbie Valencia. Too late.
Friends, let us pray. Dear Mother and Father God, embrace us in your parental love and protection this day. As the winds of change and the blast of uncertainty buffet us from every direction. Like the psalmist of old, we cry out in lament over the staggering numbers of dead and diseased, the unprecedented numbers of unemployed and insecure. To whom can we turn but to you, gracious God? In your boundless mercy, give wisdom and courage to our leaders that they might defend and protect us from all that is false from all that does not serve the common good, from all that is evil. Hold them and each of us to the highest ideals of both our faith and our citizenship, that we might meet the extreme challenges of life in this time of pandemic with both respect and regard for our neighbor. Remind us, O God, that while our faith in you is personal, it is never private. So teach us anew the stirring truth of the Wesleyan revival, that social holiness springs from personal piety, that prayer must often lead to action, that doing good is the essential call of our baptism in Christ. Open our eyes, O God, to the needs all around us today. Remind us of the teaching of our Savior that unto whom much has been given, much will be required. Open our hearts to those who suffer through no fault of their own, and just as well to those who do. For we remember before you that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Open our hands, O God, that they might be symbols of generosity reaching out to feed and clothe and shelter the least of these. For surely each one is a brother or a sister, each one a beloved child of your own creation. All this we ask and pray now in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stay like this. If 
finally kiss those training wheels goodbye But you've always made me feel like I could fly And when I fall and scrape my knee The first one running after me is you Saying give it one more try I never had to find out what it's like to be alone And as far as I know mama's just another word for home They say I'm a spitting image of the one I look up to And I I'm becoming me because of you. You. And every morning I can hear you talk to Jesus by your bed. Will you pray for me and for the strength to face the day ahead? And more than anything in this whole world, I want to be like you. So I talk. better go I just wanted you to know anyone can see it's true I'm becoming me because of you For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who sent out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them out into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. When he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again at about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and saw others standing there around. He said to them, Why are you standing there idle all day? They said, Because no one has hired us. He said back, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received their usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more each of them also received the daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour. You have made them equal to us who have been born into the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give them the last as I give to you. I am not allowed to do you what I choose with what belongs to me. Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Marks of the true Christian. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Last week we began our series that we're calling Core Curriculum, as we homeschool ourselves on the basics of our faith. Using John Wesley's three simple rules. And we talked about the first rule, which is do no harm. 
So I'm wondering, have you been able this week to think of others first? And through your words and actions, to do no harm. When I was growing up, the show Good Morning America was co-hosted by David Hartman. And he would always end the show in the same way. He'd say, now go out and make it a good day today. And it always struck me as odd to make it a good day today. Like, how do you make a good day? It either is or is not a good day, right? A good day happens to you. But later on, I realized that we actually can actively influence the quality of our day. We have the opportunity to make it a good day by how we receive it and by what we do with it. The second rule of faith to live by, the second of our core curricula, is the simple rule, do good. Sounds so simple, but in some ways it's the most challenging of the three because the simple rule is do good. It's like something your mom would say to you as you head out the door. Be careful. Wear clean underwear. Do good. Do good. What else do you say after that? It's pretty straightforward, right? Our founder, John Wesley, said it this way, do all the good you can to all the people you can. And maybe that's where it starts getting complicated. Friends, you and I are learning many things from this pandemic, one of which is that we are all a part of each other's reality, that we are all connected. And that means stranger, friend, enemy. We're all part of each other's reality and how we treat each other and how we respond to each other has an impact on the other person's life. We're all connected and we can't avoid it. And that's what the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us. Jesus has said it in so many other ways that we're called not only to do good and to love our friends, but we're also called to do good and love our enemies. And isn't that where it gets challenging? We're not called just today to do good with our families, although in certain families, even that can be pretty challenging. But we're called to go out and do good with those we may deem not worthy. I love the way Eugene Peterson talks about it in the message. He's pretty clear with us when he says, you need to do good with your friends, and this is what that looks like. You need to love them deeply, and one of the ways you love them deeply is that you practice playing second fiddle. If you really want to love your family and your friends, then put them first. Always put them first. What they need, who they are, put them first. Imagine what life would be like if we were always trying to put others first. He also says that about our friends and family, that we are to laugh with them when they are happy and cry tears with them when they are sad. In other words, we're to share the fullness of life with them, the good days and the bad days, and we're to hang in there with them and to never give up on them. Then he goes on to say, get along with each other and don't be stuck up. Sounds like junior high school, doesn't it? Don't get stuck up. In various ways, what he's trying to say is don't think of yourself as better than anybody else, but understand yourself humbly. Know that this person who is your friend or your family member is worthy of your love. 
Then he says, when you go to make friends, make friends with nobodies. Don't try to be the great somebody. It's another way of talking about what it means to be a humble Christian. Make friends with those who have no friends. Make friends with those who do not know love. Make friends with those who are discounted and set aside and cast off by this world. Don't think that we're too good to make friends with ones such as these. And then he's very clear about how we're called to do good in the lives of our enemies when he calls us to bless them, to bless them. And I understand the word bless means to share God with them, to share the love of God with them, to bless them, to share divine love with them and no cursing or grumbling about it under your breath, to bless them. No fair blessing them and then turning away and going off to grumble, grumble. To mumble under your breath about who they are and what they've done or what they should have done and didn't do. But rather with a pure heart, love them. Share God with them. And don't hit back. Meaning that if they've done something cruel to you, don't seek revenge. In fact, God says, trust me to handle things. We talked a little bit about that last week, to trust that God is in ultimate control, that God will take care of things. Discover beauty in them. Discover beauty in everyone. And then the line that if you come across an enemy, that one with whom you have contention and great difficulty, whether they're a family member, a coworker, someone in your neighborhood, whoever they are, if they happen to be hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. That is to be there for them in all kinds of ways, to do all the good we can to all the people you can. And I think that's what's hard for us, is that we see good people doing good things a lot, actually. But they may not be people who are doing God's will, doing good for God's sake. And there is a difference. So our challenge as people of faith is to figure out Hey, I can do this good thing, but is it God's will that I do this particular good thing? Is this the good thing that I'm supposed to do, that I'm called to do? I think with God, with trying to understand God's will and what it is that we're supposed to do, that we have to give everything we are. We have to live sacrificially, to give all that we can. And that means going the second mile, doing all that we can, surprising the world with our goodness, with God's goodness flowing through us. And as people of faith, isn't that what we are meant to do isn't that what we want to do each and every morning when we get up and start our day? Don't you want to be so motivated and so inspired by God, so hopeful that God will ultimately reign in peace and joy and justice and love, that we give our best, wanting God to be victorious, knowing that if we do all the good that we can to all the people that we can in all the ways we can, that we're going to further our world so that it will become a place that is filled with love and justice and mercy. We want to be like that landowner 
lavish and generous to all, motivated by something and someone who is more than of this world as we know it. And friends, if we all give good, if we all do good, if we all share goodness with others, then we will further God's kingdom and will be truly instruments of God's love. What if we get up though and we do that and somebody rejects the good we've given or people don't see it? It doesn't matter, right? Because you know what? We need to just let that roll off our backs and do good anyway. Because the world doesn't define who we are. We're defined by God. And we give no matter what the response is. Sometimes we give and we wonder if it's making any difference at all. I think I've shared this story with you before about this servant who is given the task of taking two buckets of water to his master's house every day. He loved his task, he loved doing it, and so it was with a great sense of fulfillment that he'd go down to the river every day and fill the two buckets up, and then he would carry them back to the main house to share his gift with his master. However, he started to notice that by the time he got up to the house, he would only have like a bucket and a half of water. The right bucket was losing water. So he started to pay attention and he noticed that there was a crack in the bucket. But he didn't have the resources to fix it. And so day after day he kept going down to the river and filling up these two buckets of water only to arrive back at the house with a bucket and a half. How frustrating, right? Then one day, months and months later, he noticed as he was making the trek back up the, to the master's house that along the right side of the path were these beautiful flowers. They were now blossoms in full bloom, and they went all the way from the bank of the river to the threshold of the door of the house. Wow. Needless to say, he was elated. You see, sometimes we do good, we do the right thing, and we, we think it's going without notice. We think it isn't ending up the way we think it should, or that our gift isn't perfect, or isn't ending up the way we think God had hoped. And then all of a sudden we notice unintended consequences that our gift has been used by God in ways that we least expect it. And so then that encourages us to continue to give, even when we think it's imperfect, even when we do the right thing and what happens is not exactly what we expected. We need to trust that God will work for good with the gifts that we share. A young man was diagnosed with liver cancer. It had spread all over. Doctors told him they could go in and remove part of his liver. It would hopefully bring him some more time, but it was risky. It was a difficult decision, and so he ended up seeing a counselor to help him decide what to do. And during that time with the counselor, he ended up telling her about this daydream that he had, where he was laying in the hospital bed and in came his mother and father, his older brother, his uncle, the neighbor from up the road, a few people from church. And pretty soon these folks were spilling out into the hallway and they were all telling him to have the surgery. Well, it seems pretty clear to me, the counselor said. And he said, yeah, but most of these people who showed up in my dream are no longer living. Most of them have already died. And I've been pretty alone. 
To which the counselor said, don't you know that the good that is given you in life is forever yours? It's forever yours. Friends, the good that you do in this life is forever a gift to others. It has lasting impact. And by God's grace, it transforms lives and it reminds others that they are not alone and it encourages them to do the same. Do good. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can. All the people you can. You know this, right? Say it with me. In all the places you can as long as ever you can. And then watch as the good that you do in God's name transforms the world around us. We are pilgrims on our journey. We're together on this road. We are here. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> oh, great God, use us to be instruments of your peace, to be lovers of your people, doers of your will, and bearers of your hope for this world. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, go forth to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger might find in you generous friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. This morning, our song of commissioning comes from some of the men of our congregation. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever. You can. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here on earth and those that have gone before.